Welcome to the Red Couch for this International Women's Day feature. We celebrate women who are in all spheres of life in Barbados during this month because we see it as the month of international women. And this month we are highlighting many of the outstanding women in business in Barbados. Today my very special guest is Andrea Franklin. She is currently the CEO of Chucka Tours here in Barbados, which as you know operates the caves of Barbados, but will shortly be taking up a new appointment, mm -hmm. which we will chat about uh, at some <laughs> point uh, today too as well in this discussion. So Andrea, welcome uh, to, the, to, the, to the Red Couch. Now, I, I, we like to feature um, women who have been successful as we focus on International Women's Day and, and, and all that it means. Um, one, of the, one of the fundamental driving uh, thoughts behind this series is that we want young women, um, particularly very young and sometimes vulnerable, who, who may not see at this present time a pathway to success, who may be at primary school or secondary school and wondering, well, what does the future hold for me? Mm -hmm. You know, will I be among uh, the unemployed statistics? Um, you know, how will I go? To, will I be able to, 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 to find a career? Will I get through university? That kind of stuff and so on. There are all kinds of questions that young, young women may have. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that stories uh, like yours and others, uh, everybody has a story, um, helps to show young women that there, there's nothing to prevent you from achieving mm -hmm. your, your goals. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk a little bit about Andrea and tell me a little bit about your early childhood growing up. What was that like? And um, what were your thoughts about where you would want to go? And, and more importantly too as well, how did you get um, to where you where you are. So let's start, take wow. it back to Genesis. In the beginning, <laughs> the word was. <laughs> well, um, where to start? Well, I went to Erdiston Primary School. Yes, well, we used to be at the time Erdiston Model Mixed School and Erdiston Primary, so mm -hmm. best school, best primary school in Barbados ever. Yeah, um, and I've heard that. <laughs> I've heard that, and I know that people line up to try to get in there. Oh yeah. Yes. Um, and then I went on to Queens College. Mm. Um, at school, I would have been in the sciences field, um, but then I wanted to be a physiotherapist initially. But then I realized I had to do physics. I was doing biology and chemistry, not physics. And then I was like, no, that didn't work. Really? To do, to do, to at, be a physiotherapist? At that point. At that point. So, well, I think the, mm. the program in Jamaica, in the mm. Caribbean, you needed to have physics. I think in the US it may be a little different, but mm. you needed to have physics. I didn't do physics. I had no interest in physics. So I had a shift from I, there. I, <laughs> physics had no interest in me, whether I had an interest in physics or not. <laughs> Um, but then I was always involved in culture. I used to dance, um, so I danced hotel circuit. I danced different um, events. You I did the coquette. Yeah. Oh, you were you were from the Coxburg Gold Cup days. From those the days, yeah. Forerunner to the Sandy Lane Gold Cup. Correct. So yeah. always involved in you know that type of activity. And I think my fir very first, I always wanted to work. So as soon as I was in like fourth form. My mom had a friend who was managing Grand Barbados Hotel at the time. Mm -hmm. So I did a summer job there um, with, with them. And I think that kind of piqued my interest in the hospitality um, industry. And then going into sixth form, I did geography, human geography in particular, I liked. And there was obviously a section of that that dealt with tourism. Because uh, unfortunately, tourism is not a subject that we do in schools. But we do get a little taste of it in the human geography side of it. So based on that, coming out of that then, my interest kind of went in that direction. And from there, that's where my career path has really been. Um, I studied in the Bahamas, so I went to the Center for Hotel and Tourism Management in the Bahamas. Studied there, um, did my internships, and coming out of my internships, I got my first job. So my first intern, well, my internship with the school was with Air Jamaica in Miami. And it just so happened that that's the time when they were looking to set up in Barbados. So once I graduated from there, I came back home and based on the connections I would have gotten there, um, I got a call, um, I applied and I got a call from them. And I will never forget the first time, the, the first job was an admin assistant. 
And I know people coming out of, of university, and we talk about it now as, as we get older, but we did the same thing. You feel you come out of university, and you feel you must go straight into a middle management job or something, but that, that, that is far from the reality. You need to work your way up. And that's important for young people to, to really um, recognize. Work your way up, get the experience, get your foot in the door somehow. So I got the call to be an admin assistant. And my first thing was like, I just come back from university, I don't want to admin assistant. And my mom was like, girl, you mad, go and take the job. It's a foot, it's a foot in the door. And so said so, because it, it was, Air Jamaica was small at the time, it was Tom Hill mm -hmm. and his assistant, Rosalind, and, it was, and then they brought me on. And I grew in that role. And that's where my real foundation in tourism really started. And up to this day, I still have friends and people in the industry who I still know will shout me, all the travel agents, that travel agent community. They still um, ask me for me all the time. So that's where I really started um, with Air Jamaica. And then from there, I went back to school. So I knew that I also wanted to further my education and get a master's because I figured that a bachelor's now was not yet enough. I needed to have at least a master's. Um, so I went back to school. I went, well, first of all, I did a, I was one of the first persons to do the project management course at, at UE. So at I UE. did a master's mm -hmm. in project management at UE. But for me, I didn't feel as if that was giving me enough in terms of business and where I wanted to go because at the time, and yes, it was the pilot program, I thought it was more um, geared to construction and that, that industry. And I didn't think I, I didn't think I got enough from it. So then I left and I went to do an MBA in the UK. So kind of setting up myself along the way in terms of making sure that I have the foundation edu from the education side, but also in terms of then the jobs that I went after or that I took, that it was preparing me along the way. And for me, I, al I also always wanted to be able to get a footing in terms of the different aspects in tourism. So I started in the airline industry. Um, but I came back from the math from my MBA, I went into Hilton startup when Hilton was reopening. So again, I was part of a reopening team there with Hilton. So getting the hotel side of it. Um, then I went into, I work, worked with um, the group that you know, mm -hmm. and they also had some different um, areas in tourism, um, the boating, um, the villa side. So I got quite a bit of round, um, a rounded experience in tourism to kind of bring me to where I am. So then, even now, the, when I took the job at Harrison's Cave back then under the government, I never had a, a exposure in the attraction side. So I purposely well, I said, well, it's the number one attraction in Barbados. It was an opportunity that came up. I saw it advertised and I went after that and then I got, and that's when I got to Harrison's Cave. And then that opened up the opportunity to then transition over with Chaka as I am now. So I kind of worked my way along, um, along the, the way. Um, but as I said, it's important to start from the bottom and build the foundation, make the contacts, networks. You know, so many people that you've um, encountered along the way that help you along the way as well. So that's the little long three, thing. three things uh, jump out at me there and stand out for me, the three takeaways mm -hmm. and well, what that struck me. One was that, you know, you, um, the attachment Mm -hmm. how being attached to Grand Barbados mm -hmm. uh, as, a, as a work attachment program um, tweaked your, your interest in the hospitality sector. Mm -hmm. So I would say that for me, if, if I'm a t we are talking to, to young people, Younger, yeah. take the opportunity to volunteer, even if it's, even if it's for free, mm -hmm. you know, if you get an opportunity to, to be attached on a, a, a cadet program mm -hmm. with a, 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 some industry, take it and, and because it opens up, you know, your possibilities. That was one. Mm -hmm. The second thing that struck me was that you're, the, the, you, you, you focused a lot on continuing education mm -hmm. and ensuring that you had the necessary skills. You weren't just satisfied with the bachelor's, mm -hmm. you went for the master's and then ultimately for the, for the MBA. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the, the third thing that struck me was that the expectation that many out of university feel <laughs> that they have 
um, a God-given right to come up and <laughs> expect that you're going to get a management position, mm -hmm. um, you know, middle, even if it is middle management, mm -hmm. um, is, is really not a realistic expectation. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you should be prepared to, to work your way up. Would that be a, a reasonable Correct. summary? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so the, the last point we made there about uh, expectations and, and, and jobs, I, I've certainly found that uh, sometimes people coming out of university and they came with this kind of puffed up attitude. Well, you know, I have this degree. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you and thousands of others exactly. have the degree. What is it that you're bringing to the table other than the degree? Because mm -hmm. if it's only the degree, hello, there are people who either through their experience mm -hmm. or their own qualifications <laughs> either equal you or, or, or surpass you too Correct. as well, you Correct. know? Mm -hmm. um, so you, you, you pretty much settled on, on, on hospitality mm -hmm. as, a, as, a, as an industry. Um, as you look to your, your new assignment, and, mm -hmm. and this, this interview is less about the, you know, the work we do, mm -hmm. because we, we are not defined by the work that we do. So maybe I will come back to that. Mm -hmm. I know also that you are also big into fitness too mm -hmm. as well. So mm -hmm. tell, us, tell us about your life as a, as a fitness uh, <laughs> person and, uh, and so on. You, you're too modest, but I know, I, know, I know a little bit about your story. Oh, well, if my court, yeah. my court sees this, he'd be laughing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, as I said, I've always been into active lifestyle. I mean, apart from dance, and I used to play hockey um, coming up in school. And from very young, I started with going to the gym because for me, it was also controlling my weight and having... I wanted to look a certain way, but a healthy lifestyle. Um, but being active young, you know, they didn't tell you this when you were young, you pay the price when you get older. I have bad osteoarthritis in both knees. I've had three surgeries in my, in my, knee, with my knees. So it's also about maintaining a, a healthy weight mm -hmm. balance, mm -hmm. um, a healthy weight, and making sure the muscle mass remains. So it's mainly about a having a lifestyle that I can manage um, with my knees. That's, that's one of the primary reasons. Um, but then it's just something that I love. It's my, it's my avenue for balance, really. I mean, I work, yeah, I work 10, 12 hours a day, but for me, my gym is very important. So don't call me between six and eight in the morning because I am in the gym. That is my time. You how many, how many times a week is that? I try to get there five days a week. Mm -hmm. um, some days I That's mean, a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> but yeah. I try to get there at least five days a week. Mm -hmm. some, day, some weeks, as you know, may not be the same, but and again, that's important for the balance, for creating balance. There you go. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, lifestyle uh, <laughs> balance is, is, is important. Mm -hmm. we, we can't only do work and we can't only do play. So, exactly. so you have, we have to find that, 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 that balance. Mm -hmm. um, look into your, your new assignment and um, I'm, I'm, well, of course, I mean, this is a, this is probably, this is the number one industry in Barbados. Mm -hmm. um, and you are being given the, the, the role of, of the CEO. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, the, the, the future of the number one industry is largely going to be in your hands. Mm -hmm. Of course, you're not doing it alone. Mm -hmm. You have a team, you have uh, support in a lot of areas and so on. Mm -hmm. um, when you when you when you heard that you were successful in in <laughs> in, in this, what what were your initial thoughts? Um, well, I actually was a little surprised. Um, yes, I was approached about the position. Um, I went through the entire process, two or three different meetings, interviews, etc. Mm. Um, but it still had to be approved at the at the higher levels, etc. But so I was a little surprised, but um, humbled. And then obviously when it was announced, the, the response that, my, that I got along with um, Cheryl was also announced at the same time. And I think a lot of people saw it as two women um, coming to the fore of this organization, as you said, is the number one um, foreign exchange earner for the country. So a lot lies on the two of us, but I think people seeing two women now, two Bajan women taking up the position, there was so much positive response. It was actually very humbling um, to, to get that. So. so you're starting with a lot of goodwill. Mm -hmm. There's a woman at the top two in your chair, mm -hmm. you know, then there's yourself, then there's, uh, you know, your Cheryl. COO. Mm -hmm. And then of course you have people like Marsha too as well. Exactly. So really the destiny of the country <laughs> 
is in the hands of, of the, the ladies, <laughs> you know, yes. Yeah. Um, but congratulations from, from all of us here at Capital Media. We know that you will do a fabulous job. Thank we have you. absolutely no doubt. And having a homegrown uh, CEO, mm -hmm. um, I think, is something that resonates with, with, with all people, um, you know, who... Uh, are Barbadians and even those who are not Barbadians mm -hmm. we we always feel that you know the people who are uh, Barbadians um, should know Barbados should and, know best, and know yeah. what know best what mm -hmm. what can be done mm -hmm. which brings me to the question that you touched on it in passing mm -hmm. early um, tourism mm -hmm. why why isn't tourism taught uh, I always ask this question mm -hmm. rhetorically why is it not being taught in primary school? You mm -hmm. teach me subjects in primary and secondary that I may never use in my life. Correct. But tourism touches all of us. Mm -hmm. um, do you think there's a case for us to, to begin to teach tourism a lot earlier than we are? I think definitely. I mean, yeah. we've been talking about it for years, um, but it, it kind of stops at the top and nothing is being done, well, not that I am aware, aware of, of. Um, to actually have it as a subject at CSEC per mm -hmm. se. It's incorporated into, I believe, some other um, subject area, but mm -hmm. not as a standalone topic. But I think for as a region, and it's not only Barbados, it's, tourism is important for the entire Caribbean region. It's the in, uh, main income earner for most of us, if not, uh, well, not all of us, but most, but uh, most, most, of, most the of us. Most of us, And I yes. think definitely we should be doing more to push it as a subject. Yeah. Um, from younger, but even if not younger, definitely at CSEC or Cape level, it should be um, taught yes. on the subject. Because if you, from the Bahamas mm -hmm. all the way down, uh, Jamaica, Barbados, Grenada, Antigua, mm -hmm. all of our, perhaps except for Trinidad and Tobago, mm -hmm. um, or Trinidad more so than Tobago, and Guyana, and Guyana, tourism, and even in Guyana, tourism is becoming increasingly, especially mm -hmm. e ecotourism, mm -hmm. uh, a critical component of of, of, of their uh, national landscape. So really and truly throughout the Caribbean, whether it's in H Island of Dominica Correct. or the beaches of Grenada and Antigua mm -hmm. and so on, you know, it's um, Cayman and these places. I mean, it's tourism is the business that we are all in yeah. in the Caribbean. I hear a lot of talk about alternatives, you know, we should have, but I've never heard anybody tell me what Why the alternative what is it? <laughs> you know, we should diversify. Okay, we agree, yeah. but diversify to what? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So Andrea, mm -hmm. I want to now um, as we talk about International Women's Day mm -hmm. and as a woman who has been successful in your career, both in terms of your you know, your academic mm -hmm. studies and then your work experience being rounded. Uh, working with Air Jamaica. By the way, I miss Air Jamaica. I used to, <laughs> I used to enjoy the food and the fashion, uh, yes. uh, the fashion shows <laughs> and the food um, and the price too, because Jamaica, yeah. Air Jamaica used to have some really great prices. Mm -hmm. It actually was a great experience mm -hmm. flying with, with Air Jamaica. Um, but as we look at International Women's Day and, and, and we celebrate in the month of March, um, you know, the successes of our, our women um, across the globe and, and within our region. Who, who are the women? I have two questions for you. One, what does International Women's Day mean to you? Mm -hmm. And who, if any, are the women that you look to and you say, well, these are the women that, that I admire. These are the women that, um, you know, I really look up to. Yeah, well... And in any order, you can choose. Sure. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, in terms of the women I uh, look up to, the women I admire, obviously, first of all, my mom. Um, she sets, she's given me the foundation, um, the, I think her temperament, her love for service and love for people, um, that's something that I obviously look up to and try to emulate. Um, she's always giving, <laughs> um, sometimes to a fault. Sounds and, like my mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I would say Michelle Obama, um, for sure, she's someone that I admire um, the way she carries herself but uh, well not only in terms of supporting their husband but she's a strong well-educated woman who can certainly stand on her own I think up to now people still trying to spread rumors that she's gonna run for president yeah um, so I think um, for me those two I mean there are a lot of others but those are the two that come to mind obviously stand out. that stand out for mm -hmm. me 
Um, for it, but International Women's Day really is about recognizing the role of women in society. Um, yes, there are some that say we, we, uh, we are now a woman, it's now a woman's world, but there's still so much more that can be done and the, the International Women's Day is ready to highlight that there's still a lot of um, disparity in terms of um, where we are and until we can see our, I, saw, I think I saw somebody saying until there's a point where you, it's not a big surprise that a woman has gotten a certain position that it, is, it becomes the norm. <laughs> um, we are, there's still a lot of, there's a, still a long way to go. We have cultures that women are still, you know, still inferior to men and there are certain things that they have to go through. So there's still a long way. I mean, we are lucky here in the Caribbean, in the Western Hemisphere, in terms of having the respect within society, but even still, there's still um, disparity in pay in many instances in the, in the workplace. There are certain positions or in certain industries where men still dominate and we want to be able to see more women mm -hmm. at the table. So it's really to recognize that there's still a lot of work to be done, but we recognize the ones that are making strides, that are making the way and paving the way for others as well. So for me, it all wrapped up into that. Um, and when we talk about International Women's Day. So we, mm -hmm. we, we've, we've made great strides, mm -hmm. but we still have a way to go yeah. yet. There's still <laughs> ceilings that still have to be, to be uh, burst through to as well. Um, on the relaxed side of things, mm -hmm. I, know, I know the, uh, the as you, you've made it very clear, 6 to 8 a.m., <laughs> that's, your, that's your gym time. Um, and, 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 and I think that that life balance is important. What about things like music? Um, what are your preferences uh, in music? Well, I'm a soca girl all the way. A soca girl all, all the way. All, all, all the way. <laughs> soca junkie. <laughs> Correct. And last time, by no means least, I want you to uh, really look into that camera and address young women, young girls who may be 10, 12, 13, 14, 15 mm -hmm. years old, who are now looking at you and saying, oh, she's a very successful woman, mm -hmm. she's a CEO, you know, um, but don't necessarily see mm -hmm. uh, how they could get from where they are in their perhaps very humble environment, mm -hmm. you know. What do you say to um, a young girl who is seeing you now and is struggling with her whole mm -hmm. sense of identity and what does the world hope? Uh, have for her? Sure. Um, I think as, as a young woman, it's important to recognize, <laughs> important to recognize um, that the future, there's, it's boundless. Um, working hard, certainly. Um, respecting yourself, which is very important, especially in today's society. There's the whole social media thing, and I think a lot of young people, young women are being caught up and not necessarily portraying themselves in the way that they should and then they tend to then question why things are happening um, as a result but just to remember um, in for them it's about always portraying yourself in a positive light um, respecting others and also the way that you treat people, the way that you want yourself to be treated, you treat people. And I think if you do that, you will be able to gain the respect of others. Um, education is always important. You must be able to, and I mean, not everyone will excel in certain areas, but it's being able to find something that you're passionate about as well, something that you love and pursue that, um, find ways, to create um, opportunities within that specific area. It may be a, a course that may come up and you, you start doing small things to be able to educate yourself or to gain the knowledge in the specific area that you would want to. And as Vic said earlier, opportunities for internships, opportunities for volunteering, even um, community work as well, getting out, getting out there and then being involved in community activities, that also opens the door for a lot of things. It, it allows you to meet new people and from there the opportunities are boundless. So I think it's about putting in the work 
Um, it's not going to be easy. Yes, you have to put in the work. Sometimes you've got to work long hours, but at the end of the day, once you're willing to work hard, you're willing to be honest, be respectful, um, always make sure that you operate from a, a point of view of never compromise your integrity in, every, in anything. And I think once you remem remember these things, that success will come eventually. Andrea Franklin, the incoming CEO of the Barbados Tourism Marketing Incorporated. Thank you very much for being my awesome guest on today's uh, Red Couch as we focus on successful women uh, and we celebrate March as the month of international women and specifically International Women's Day. So thank, thank you. For you having me. Thank my, you. My special guest. <laughs>